Hiya, and welcome back to Monster Village. The game that teaches us that... Uh... <laughs> the game that teaches us that... I, I can't think of anything. <laughs> that one thing, uh, Mort being like, King, keep King Julian's toes out your fucking mouth. That is stuck in my head. And I don't want to make a joke about that. Do I need to be in a straight jacket? Probably. Anyways, let's just hop right in. I want to eat Chipotle though. I've never had it, but I want to. But I want to try it. It is time. Protect Koku. Oh jeez. We're gonna redo the entire trial. No, we're not. The trial starts now and we're speed running. I believe this happened about four nights ago. I remember it was raining down pretty hard. We're on a cliff. Sir Largo said he would go on ahead and check down if there are any caves we can rest in. Three minutes I got worried, so I asked the Admiral if I can check up on him. Once I got down, I saw Sir Largo on the ground and what looked like a dodo gama over his body. I saw a lot of Sir Largo's blood trailing from the river. It must be his wounds from being attacked. By the time the Admiral got down to the cliff, the Dodogama has escaped into the forest. I see. The victim separated from your group to scout the area and find shelter. However, when you haven't heard from them of, after a few minutes, you follow the trail and saw him being attacked. Yeah. Because I will eat your testimony! I will consume your testimony. We're speed running. Oh wait, I already fucked up. I still remember a shape being round and wearing a gray shirt. And we're we're just speed running. I can't remember. I can't remember. It's time I, I to drink remember. water. It's time to drink water. It's time to drink water. It's time to drink water. How do you send a nuke to the Admiral legally? I don't know. Okay. About four nights ago, it was raining pretty hard. On a cliff, Sir Largo said he wanted to go on ahead and check down if there are any caves we can rest in. After a few minutes, I got worried, so I asked the Admiral if I can check up on him. Once I got down, I searched Sir Largo on the ground and what looked like a dodo gama over his body. I saw a lot of Sir Largo's blood trailing from the river. It must be his wounds from being attacked. Yeah, I think it's this. I need the answers again, please. Please! I'm... Fuck off, macOS updates! I don't care that you want to update. I'm going to try the medical report. I don't know. Jack! You seem to be lying through your teeth! But that's just a theory. A game theory. I'm just kidding. I was? I'm not sure if you remember, but the victim didn't have any wounds. According to this medical report, the body did not have any wounds. 
and I quote, Sir Largo did not sustain any injuries prior to being in the village. The body was covered in blood, yet there are no such wounds it could have come from. So if the body did not sustain any wounds, how is this suspect able to harm them? Ah! Uh, well, maybe it's, um... Sir Asher, may I ask where did you get this report from? This was given to me by the village's own medical feline, Grano. And what time were you given this report? Huh? I went to him yesterday morning to check the victim and I requested a medical report. If I remember correctly, it was just an hour after the commander arrived. My, how unfortunate. Admiral, your point being? That medical report is outdated, Commander. W what? Since the commander arrived with the doctor, I took the liberty of asking him to check the victim, and of course draft a second medical report. It seems that medical feline of yours was not thorough enough to see the wounds. A bit sad to be fair. A uh, doctor from the guild was here? I see. Young Asher, after listening to the felines you've sent, I brought along a doctor to check the situation. What it didn't account for was the village's medical feline. There you have it. A licensed and well-respected guild doctor has given their medical opinions on this. Once he had finished undoing your feline's patchy bandages, he noticed the chest had what looked like scratch marks on them. Ergo, it, would have been, it wouldn't have been implausible still that the suspect attacked Sir Largo. Aye, but that can't be. I was there in the morning. I had a feeling there was something different. Young Asher, when I visited Sir Largo before I came to your place, I was with the doctor. There was a wound on the chest by the time I saw it. What? I... That doesn't make sense. Did Grano give me the wrong report, or did he actually... No. I don't think Grano would have betrayed me. This only means that the Admiral did something to the victim after I left. So there you go, Commander. The Scrivener's argument is already crumbling. What's wrong, Scrivener? You look like you have something to say. I'm a sham! <laughs> what reason could you possibly have to request another medical report? Young Asher, I will not allow you to attack their character. It is alright, Commander. I'm sure he was fooled by the feline, so I wouldn't blame him. I see. Uh, no, he didn't fool me. I know he gave me the right information otherwise, why would he even write it down to begin with? No, I have to question him later, but right now, maybe it's best if I hold on to this updated report. Yay! Looks like there's nothing else to discuss. Then I guess there's no other reason to prolong this. Let us end this because we're behind schedule. Already? Can't let it end like this. Come on, think! Wait. Looking at the medical reports, I noticed there's something that both the doctor and Grano seem to agree upon. Does this mean... Ah! Uh... Um, so does that mean I can go now? Yes, you can join your fellow hunters. Okay, I think I'll just stop right there. Wait right there. Huh? Is there anything else you would need from him? Yes, Commander. There is still something he has yet to explain. I, what? What is the meaning of this? The witness explained what happened after finding Sir Largo, but he didn't explain what happened after that. I request the witness revise his testimony to include what happened after. Is this really important to the case? Young Asher, what would be the reason to ask this? It is because... You mentioned that you were the one who saw the suspect, that they ran away and went back into the forest. By this time, I presume you have assisted the victim? However, this doesn't explain how the suspect drowned. Explain yourself! What are you talking about? Really, Admiral? I thought you would be the first to notice. What? If you look closely at both of the medical reports Grano and your doctor gave, there is one part that the witness did not clarify. And I notice you have yet to mention this as well, Admiral. If you really claim that your witness saw everything, where was the explanation for him drowning? Well, you see, I, uh... Commander, this is absurd. This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless. Oh. I assure you it's quite based. <laughs> I was unsure if the doctor's notes were real, but if the report actually says he drowned, then we are not getting the full explanation. What in Shrade are you talking about? Think about it. You said you found the suspect on top of the victim and then ran away. That doesn't actually explain he attacked him. If for all we know, it might be something different. The witness only saw the situation after everything has occurred. 
if I'm right... Koku didn't attack the victim! He might have actually saved the victim from drowning! That is just an opinion! What proof do you have that this is actually what happened? My proof is this. Evidence that proves that the victim may have drowned. Oh, fuck. <laughs> the fucking medical report again. We, we, we fucked up. <laughs> Except we didn't. The medical report that you so requested! If the information wasn't so critical, then they didn't have to put this part in! However, the fact that it says here that the victim drowned... It means we cannot remove the idea that the victim may have been the one hostile to the suspect! <laughs> Silence! Admiral, is this true? Y yes Commander! The report does say that Sir Largo drowned before being wounded as per the doctor's autopsy. I thought it was irrelevant because... Admiral, there is no information irrelevant in a hearing. I expect full transparent information from the both of you. I cannot give my ruling unless there is even a small possibility there that the suspect did not attack the victim. C commander you don't! Admiral, that is enough. Did I not give you the same treatment earlier? It is your responsibility to give me the truth. You understand the consequences to go against my fair ruling here? Now instruct your witness. Ugh. Yes, Commander. I'll somehow able to climb my way out of that. I just need to keep this momentum up. Oh, Admiral. Seeing your upset face really flustered like that really motivates me to work harder. Hate Yowie. Rookie! Explain what happened more in detail after you found the victim. I thought I I thought he always had that voice. Y yes, sir. After I was given permission by the admiral to go check, I went down the cliff slowly since I had a lot of trouble. When I found the Dodogama and Sir Largo, I was too afraid to move. All I can see from far away was the Dodogama. Hang on, I'm gonna prove that. The admiral does not deserve any kind of yaoi. What about in yaoi where he gets humbled? When I found the Dodogama and Sir Largo, I was too afraid to move. All I can see from far away was the Dodogama. It was... I waited a bit to think what to do. But then I heard the Admiral calling for me. That's when the Dodogama stood up and ran away. Luckily, the Admiral saw what I saw and told me to give chase to it. I tried to chase into the forest, but eventually lost him. And that's when I turned back and tended to Sir Largo, who was already unconscious. Hmm. So you gave chase to the suspect, but you were not able to catch up. I I'm sorry, Commander. The rain was too strong and it was really dark, so I had trouble seeing. Very well. Young Asher, you may begin your cross-examination. Thank you, Commander. This one sounds much stronger than before. I might need to question these claims more if I'm to get anywhere. No, because that plank's too good for... Admiral. Or speed running again. What is bro's defenses? Ah, fuck you, Admiral. I think I already know what to do. It's the bullet! Is it the bullet? I think it's the bullet. Yeah, it's the bullet. Now let me make sure I'm on the right one. Yeah. Is the bullet. I believe you are forgetting something, Jack! Uh, again? You mentioned earlier that there was no way for you or your team to be able to reach Koku. But there's something you also said. And that proves that you're actually lying! What?! What is the meaning of this, young Asher? What exactly are you talking about? 
Then let me just show you. If you look at this closely, Commander, this is a bullet that I found at the waterfall where the accident took place. This bullet is rather clean and hasn't been rusted. This means that it has been dropped there for a few days only. If there is a bullet found in the water, then it only means someone is carrying a ranged weapon that could have reached the suspect. This also means that the one carrying the weapon did not use it in that dire moment. I'm having way too much fun doing a map pad impression. Silence, I'm ordering silence. Young Asher, what are you insinuating? A simple, Commander. There was no reason for the Admiral to give that order if one of his men carried a bow gun. And what is your point? What is the point of this with the current case? We are trying to learn the course of the accident towards Sir Largo, not the suspect. That is true. However, this begged the question. Why did you or your hunters not shoot Koku instead? <laughs> that is because the gun was jammed. I was only able to fix this after I settled in the house. After you settled in? That's pretty bold of you to assume as if you already guaranteed a win against these monsters. And jammed? Highly unlikely and such a perfect excuse. If there's anything I know about hunting weaponry is that bow guns cannot be jammed that easily. It wasn't jammed? No. The reason you didn't shoot is because... Admiral? You're lying! You knew the existence of this village. That is why I didn't shoot so you can find the settlement. And the reason you ordered Jack to chase him was to create a witness. A witness that will remember the features of the one that attacked. I was worried for nothing. What? You've yet to answer my question. What is your point? Well, I... Yes, you have given everyone the idea that I may have known about the village. Let's say I may have even given the wrong order at the time for jokes. My answer is still the same. The suspect attacked the victim. I believe pointing this all out is useless. Ah! Young Asher, do you have any other arguments about how this correlates to the current case? Commander, I... Let me assist our poor friend here, Commander. He presumes that I knew about this place before I set off on this quest. After we left at a night where it rained heavily, I assumed that one of the villagers would attack my men. The rookie saw him, and then I ordered to chase the suspect so that I could make a witness. Even if that is true, it didn't change the fact that this Dodogama attacked one of my men. Oh, apologies, I believe we call him Sir Koku. Keep Koku's name out your fucking mouth! Not to mention, you failed to say anything to save his case, but just questioned why I didn't kill him then. No, I just... Young Asher, I'll give you another chance to explain yourself. What is the point of finding an unfired bullet at the scene? It is... Come on, think. There must be another way. Instead of finding the reason for it in the case, I need to think outside the box. What is the connection of this bullet to this case? What if I stop focusing on the bullet, but the owner of the weapon? A weapon can be deadly depending on who is holding it. But who? Who could have held the bow gun? Young Asher? Looks like you realize something. Commander! I'd like to call into question the owner of the bow gun! You're grasping. Does it even matter who had the bow gun to begin with? There was a bow gun at the scene, and. Knowing the owner of the bow gun is vital to knowing why they didn't shoot the suspect. And when you realize who owns the bow gun, it will all make sense. The bow gun was actually owned by none other than the victim himself! Sir Largo was the one who owned the bow gun? Yes, Commander! All we needed to do was do to confirm is ask the witness here. Did Sir Largo brought a bowgun on this quest? The Scrivener is badgering the witness. There's no need for him to answer. Dismissed. The witness will answer. I... Jack, it is just a simple question. We need the truth here and only but the truth. What is Sir Largo's weapon of choice during this quest? Ugh. It was a light bow gun. Silence! I am requiring silence! I'll always love those lines. Young Asher, what does this achieve? It is clear now, Commander. The suspect Koku couldn't have harmed Sir Largo because he was armed. How can you be so sure about that? It is much simpler if we break it down. Because Sir Largo is armed and the villagers here are not, it would be highly unlikely that anyone will attack Sir Largo unprovoked. 
It is the same concept to monsters, after all. Monsters that don't attack even when they see someone with a weapon. These are either docile monsters or fellow humans. That is a brazen excuse. These are dangerous monsters, a dodogama known to terrorize local or even the environment. Assuming they didn't attack, Sir Largo was armed as complete idiocy. Then let me ask you this, Admiral. Why did you even then try to avoid the details about the weapons involved? <laughs> as a hunter, isn't your first instinct to fight? If you're an admiral, and unless I see these lances that you and your men carrying, carry as them just compensating, you did not want to talk about the weapon. What do you think the admiral didn't want to talk about the weapon? He didn't want to talk about it because... He lacked the evidence to prove he did! Of course there is a wound on his chest, but that hardly counts as evidence as it can be from other reasons. Reasons that may relate to him drowning. The admiral only gave his opinions as facts! without considering the evidence to back it up. Now let me ask you something, Admiral. What other evidence do you have that can prove why Koku attacked Sir Largo? I... Asher uh, sure brings up a very good point. Commander, these are just speculations. Speculations it may be, but it brings up a very good argument. I cannot fathom that a villager who prefers to be hidden to suddenly attack someone unprovoked, much less knowing the victim was armed. Hidden Wavarian villagers already exist, and through diplomatic relations we found out they prefer to be hidden because they loathe violence. This does not prove that Sir Koku is free from blame, but if you cannot produce a motive, I cannot in fairness have Sir Koku liable. This also includes the attitudes and orders from YOU, Admiral! This puts your leadership into question. C commander I- That is a huge blow to his inflated ego. May not have proven Koku innocent, but at least I've proven that the witness is unreliable and the Admiral is hiding something. Edgeworth would never... Exactly. Silence. Jack, you may now join the other hunters. Y yes sir Young Asher. Yes, Commander? You have a witness to call. A witness? I believe you do not, then, if you question such. Apologies, Commander. I did not prepare a witness. Admiral, do you have any other arguments? Admiral? I see. That can work. Commander, since the Scrivener brought up the idea of motive, I'd like to return to our discussion before. Discussion? And which one would that be, Admiral? I would like the Scrivener to verify the intent of the residents. So I'd like to request that we question one of them. That does make sense. Young Asher, we still have a sh we will have a short recess and we will continue in an hour. In the meantime, please discuss with one of the residents to be the next witness. Admiral, we need to discuss something that has been occupying my mind recently. Sir, we shall reconvene in, ten mi in 30 minutes. That will be all. Prepare the lug orbital, Rayono. After the trial, the hunters have disbanded. The commander went to one of the rooms, practically pushing the admiral with him. I don't know what is happening, but he looks pissed. As much as I dislike the guy, the commander being angry is something I never want to see again. Young Asher. E Elder! He hasn't stood up yet from his chair and appears to be very weak. Elder, I'll get the housekeeper. You look like it's you need time food. To drink water. Do not worry about me, young Asher. It's time to drink water. You are doing water. a fine job. I'll stay here it's because that is my agreement water. with your commander. I only want to it's offer a suggestion. A suggestion? I'd like you to ask Gerald for his cooperation. He has been here for as long as I have as well. The chief? I guess I can, but why can't you testify instead? You're way better at talking and... The elder raised his hand as I paused. It is simply because I trust Gerald. So I'd like you to ask him, and I cannot make any moves if I want to save the village. Is this about the agreement between you and the commander? If it is to protect my village, I would gladly offer my life. Elder, please don't say that. We still need you. <laughs> you have truly become one of us, young Asher. Elder, now go. I believe you do not have enough time left. Yes, Elder. Man, I was hoping it would be Garu. I like Garu. Come along with me. This yield would get upset with me if I just ruined our chances of winning this. Yes. We are so close. Garu would probably be even less composed though. Yeah, but it'd be funnier. Kind of. Not really. Really? 
Garu would just kill him. Silence. We will now continue our hearing for this monster village. Young Ashra, I presume you have a witness? Yes, Commander. I, I can call him when ready. Very good. Before we proceed, I would like to present additional evidence for the record. Evidence? It has come to my attention that there has been some withheld evidence by the hunters that is relevant to this case. Silence. Because this is withheld from the Scrivener, this will be added to the record for this case. It is to ensure a fair and proper decision will be made after considering all the facts. New evidence. Yay! Huh? Commander, is this the armor of Sir Largo during the incident? More importantly, what is this scratch mark? Correct. This was collected by the Admiral and was hidden from your view. I was able to come upon it when I was discussing with the Admiral after I arrived. Hmm. Now let us continue. Young Asher, call your witness. Yes, sir. As we have discussed earlier about everyone's skepticism of the villagers, I would like to call upon the village chief, Gerald. He is located near the construction range in one of the houses. He resembles a furious Rajong. Silence. I demand silence. Hunters, please collect Sir Gerald immediately. And do not even think about harming him. <laughs> Gerald, please state your name and profession for the records. Gerald? Uh, oh, he is glaring blades towards the Admiral. I need to say something. I'm gonna send him a signal. Calm yourself down! Uh, what are we talking about? Y your name and profession, Gerald. Right. I am Gerald. I am the village chief here, and I also do the construction. Construction? There is a somewhat large area that you can see from one of the windows. The area is currently in construction to make more houses for the villagers since they require more space because of their sizes. Gerald here is in charge of that. I see. Sir Gerald? I. I? At least say sir. I'm the one going to get in trouble if this goes wrong. You're about to testify on behalf of the residents. Anything you say will reflect their actions and thoughts. You will answer any question that is relevant to the discussion, and you will state the truth and nothing but the truth. I believe the Scrivener has mentioned this to you. Yeah, the kid told me already how this works. Very well. Then do you accept this responsibility of being the representative of the residents? That's a pretty big, a big ask, sir. I accept. Very good. Yell Gasher, you may begin. Thank you, Commander. Here we go. I'll start asking some questions first to get the ground running. Gerald? Which one? Okay, Matt Pat, calm down. That's his that's his new name, Matt Pat. <laughs> Sorry, this music's groovy. Can you tell us more about what kind of Wolverians you and the villagers are? Oh? Huh? No right. We are called true Wolverians. We might look like scary monsters, but we are just pretty normal like you all. Depending on what monsters we resemble, we share some of their natural traits. I told the kid over there that I might look like a Rajong, but I can't even charge anything to save my life. This fur helps make my body strong enough, though, so I guess that counts for something. Yeah, after all, we don't get any human visitors, so we don't have to scare anyone. But I see. So true Wolverians just share the appearance of related monster. But it seems that your body also grows along with that relation. Uh, I ain't really a thing with fancy words. The commander just repeated what you said, Gerald. Ah, uh, then I guess you're right. Mm-hmm. Now, Admiral, do you have any questions? I do, Commander. Rajong, where did you get the idea of this true Varian? Rajong. I believe calling you by your monster species is respectful enough. Or really show us that furious part of your nature, too. Yeah. What's wrong? Something to say? Commander, I demand respect from the Admiral. Clearly, he's trying to get a rise out of Gerald to prove a point. I'm only asking a question in relation to his testimony. I do not firmly believe that having thick fur is what they only possess. I'm not sure if you are aware, but monsters get their air of danger on their externals as well. Think of a... Gypseros's flash, a Velocidrome's claws, and even a Glavinus's tail. That is why I question the source of calling themselves true Avarians. I see. The Scrivener's argument is dismissed. 
The witness will answer. Hmm. <laughs> Ra Zhang, you know you've not been aware of how the guild works. But a little friendly advice. If you deny an answer right now, this would only prove my point that you all made this up as a defense. And this does not work on me because I only value the truth of the matter. Ugh. Oh, calm down. We are only verifying your words. I should also remind the witness that any actions that endanger us hunters might make things problematic for you. So how about just explaining every detail about true ovarians? Gerald, I can tell his patience is wearing thin. Huh? Ah, he's looking over here. I gave him an, I gave an odd thumb to answer. As much as I want to keep him silent for this, we are not in a real courtroom. Staying silent means an admission of guilt. The best way to save both his credibility and Koku's innocence is to have him explain his side. I cannot help but be curious as well. True ovarians are just like normal ovarians. We look like the monsters you hunt, but we're no more dangerous than who you talk to every day. Depending on who we resemble, we gain traits like them too, with some limitations. And how can we even know about us? We ain't never had a visitor before to ask. That's before I met the kid over there. So even you don't know. Just as I suspected. This entire true ovarian ploy was just an excuse to brand yourselves as safe. Commander, this witness is clearly deranged, as with the rest of the residents, and even admitted that they gained traits of the monsters a mirror. How can we be sure that this is all act to ambush us? Huh? Say that again, you little... Admiral, I again warn you of badgering the witness. You should still give him respect by at least calling him by name. I mean, ambush? Aren't you and your hunters the one that ambushed this village? Badgering? I was just doing the same tactic used on one of my men earlier. I'm only questioning him in the possibility of it being fake. Oh, some of my other hypotheses. And you said so yourself. Sir Asher, we are hunters. We are tasked to attack monsters if it means to endanger humans. Oh? Is that really the truth? Is that just an excuse for you to cover up the fact you are scared of something new? Naivete really is the world you live in. I make decisions if it means to protect. A resident harmed one of us, so any sane person would assume they all would as well. If you think making decisions that would cause our death as an excuse, maybe enter the wrong profession, Sir Asher. Naive as it may be, that only means I can save those that you cannot. I believe that Gerald has only given the facts, and I'll prove it to you. Commander, allow me to cross-examine the witness. He is your witness, I don't believe you should. And this is not a real court, so I can use his words to prove to you that this is not false. That is enough. You both have presented your arguments about Sir Gerald's testimony. However, it seems that young Asher might have some evidence to back up his defense. I will allow the cross-examination. However, please make no mistakes that we will need to that we will need concrete evidence for this. Ah, <sighs> very well. In that case, I'll be sure to listen carefully so I can end that false play you have been staring in. Hmm. This guy is really getting on my nerves. I'm gonna crack my neck. Yeah, fuck off, Admiral. We don't care. Oh, shit. I think it's time for the letters. Yeah, I think it's time for the old notes. I'm pretty sure it's on this one. I, I can't remember. I can't remember. I've been too busy trying to kiss Koku. Yay! Gerald? Is it really true that you didn't know about true ovarians before? They'll keep saying it over and over. I don't know where did the true ovarian thing came from. 
Just the elder told me and these hunters are not letting him explain. Because I believe that you are actually lying. Why would a village chief not know anything like that? The only solution was it being a lie. Such a made-up story is not worth listening to. Then if you won't listen to his story, then how about a scrivener's? Are you insinuating you told them about this? Don't make me laugh. You only started this year and you have yet to actually do anything noteworthy. Enlighten me, please. Yes, I am still new. Nothing noteworthy can come from my few months of being in the guild. Who said anything about it being me, though? I am talking about the Scrivener who first found this village. What? Young Asher, what do you mean? During my investigation of the village, I was able to find some old records. Notes from some years ago. Notes? What are the importance of these scribblings by these monsters? They could be lies. I knew you wouldn't believe the words of a villager, but these are the words of a Scrivener. What? It says here that they encountered the monster they were monitoring. They got injured and eventually found this village. What are you talking about, kid? Gerald, you said earlier that the village did not have any visitors. Why did you lie about that? Lie? <clears throat> you mean... Yes, Gerald. In fact, it was you who suggested they stay hidden so they would heal. I... Mm. Young Asher, what is the meaning of this? Is he not your witness? Why are you contradicting his statements? There's a reason for this, Commander. Gerald had no choice but to explain that there was no other visitor because... Any explanation he would give would crumble if he doesn't have anything to show for. He cannot explain why they knew they were true Ovarians because he lacks the evidence. That is unless he brings up this injured Scrivener in his testimony. But like an empty explanation will also crumble with no evidence. Evidence that I now have! To quote from the notes here, I believe I read about them too. True Ovarians. And on the day he leaves, I told the Elder about true Ovarians. What do you have to say about that, Admiral? This is just fabricated evidence. How could we be sure that this indeed came from a legitimate guild member? We do not have any records here on the hundreds and thousands of guild members. I request this evidence to be disregarded. There is a way of knowing the authenticity. The Commander! What? The Commander is one of the longest running leaders in Dundorma. I remember reading something here. I have a feeling the village will get larger in the future. I might even get assigned here from Dundorma. That's all we need to ask. Commander! Please check these notes and tell us if it is someone if it's from someone who worked at the guild. Very well. The entire room is silent. The only sounds we can hear are the flipping of the pages. After a while, the commander stopped and looked at the contents of one letter. He has a look of surprise, but also a somewhat visible smile. Once he finished, he placed all the letters and notes back in their envelopes and placed it aside. He closed his eyes and faced back to all of us anticipating in the room. After carefully checking each letter or note, I have come to a conclusion. These letters are... Indeed written by a guild scrivener. What? Silence. This particular scrivener is located near the Forbidden Lands a few years ago. I'm quite familiar with him. Thinking about it now, this might also be related to true variants. Regardless of his reason, this proves that these were written by another scrivener. Therefore, he is correct. This is authentic. Thank you, Commander. So, Admiral, this proves that they are indeed Wavarians and not just monsters. Therefore, labeling them as such without any motive would not be the truth. K lucky bastard. Admiral, do you have any other arguments? <laughs> I admit that true Wavarians then might have been recorded before. But that does not prove the innocence of that Dodo Gama. What are you talking about, Admiral? Oh, calm down, you. But before anything else... Sir, Gerald, was it? What do you want now? How is your, you call them, your kid? I would say something happened to the Zenogre back there. What would you do? Fuck you! Just my kid, kids are gonna kill you, hear me? I will kill you! Silence, I demand silence. Hunters, please escort Sir Gerald back to his house. Admiral, what are you trying to achieve here? Commander, let me be more honest for a second. We have been running around in circles about this place. I understand that it is my job to be thorough with the investigation, but I also dislike wasting time. I only played along because of the Scrivener's request. What kind of superior would I be if I were to not listen? Then what do you suggest? As you can see, the current witness showed me conviction in those eyes of harming me. Obviously, he cannot do anything because of the repercussions of his actions if he were to even lay a finger on me. That is because you threatened his children! 
Ah, uh, yes, protecting the ones you care about. If this were your story, that would have been the end of it. We are still missing one thing. What do you mean? Of course, I am talking about the truth. The truth? Let me put into words that you might understand. All of this was a waste of time. So I'm requesting to end this farce. What? But it's about the villagers and... Think about it. We have a witness and an injured hunter to prove that the Dodogama attacked us. Yeah, you only have sweet words without any evidence to back it up. I have to agree with the Admiral. What? We have discussed the village, however, we cannot ignore the individual that attacked. But Commander! Listen here, newbie. N newbie? You were not there that night, and I have other witnesses that saw how bloody the victim was. I believe we should end our farce here unless you have anything that might prove useful. I, uh... I see not. Commander, we are really behind schedule. We should move while there is still sun out. Facts might not always be the truth. Sir? I always believe the truth that truth will only prevail if all the facts are proven true. Seeing as we do not know everything, I have a solution that would be easier. A solution? What do you mean, sir? We can just ask the suspect himself. What? Silence. This has gone long enough. Both of you have ran around the suspect and the subject and the admiral is correct. You should confirm it from the source and just ask the suspect directly. But commander, he's dangerous. He harmed one of my men. Enough. You claim the efforts of the Scrivener were in vain. However, it is proof enough to bring him to the witness stand. Unless you claim that a table full of hunters cannot handle one small dodo gamma. I cannot risk my men on this. Apologies, Commander, but I decline. I understand your fear. However, I will not pass down my judgments on speculations from both sides. So I suggest we call him as your witness before we spend another night here. If there are no more objections, let us now call the suspect. Koku. Since you're calling him as a witness now, I can directly disprove anything they say. I'm so close. The truth is just within reach. Silence. We will now continue with the hearing for the suspect. Because of time constraints and everyone's mental status, this will be the last for the day if we will extend this for tomorrow. However, I am hoping we can settle everything right now. Admiral, you may now call the suspect. Commander, are you sure about bringing such a dangerous monster here? I have requested all the hunters to be on high alert. Even if he moves in a dangerous way, the hunters here, including myself, will restrain the suspect. You should not underestimate me and my men again, Admiral. Y yes Commander. I really don't want to see the commander go angry. Calm down, Asher. I should focus. Koku is finally up and he will be interrogated. I'm sorry, Koku. I'll make it up to you later for putting you in this position. I hope you can handle the pressure because everything rides on his words. Koku. Maybe it's just me, but he looks exhausted. Koku might have received the same treatment as the Elder. Dodogama, state your name and occupation. Suspect! Oh, hey there, mister. I didn't notice you. <laughs> what? Sorry, I guess I got so used to having interesting people around me that you just disappeared. Maybe if you pull your head out of your ass, you I can finally see how much shit was smeared on it that made you so blind. <laughs> Koku? Why, you? Admiral, I am again requesting for you to s respect the villagers. Is getting nowhere. How about I just do the talking, Commander? Very well. Please question the suspect. Well, here's my chance. Better not screw this up. Hey, Koku. We just got some questions about a few nights ago, and we needed some answers from your perspective. At least you're better to talk to you than than that standing hit me sign. <laughs> Koku. I sometimes forget Koku's mannerisms and attitude don't match at all. I just need your help. We need your testimony about a few nights ago when it was raining. I think it was the time when you visited me that night. You don't see it like that. I... Mm. Koku looks weirdly tired. I know he, is, he has a lot on his plate ever since the hunters arrived, so I need to speed everything up. I want to spend more time with you, so I better make this last time. 
I should just get straight to the point so this can all be over soon. Koku, can you tell me what happened four nights ago when you were at the waterfall? Mm. The truth? Koku, I know this is overwhelming and I don't want to put you in this position. I want to let you know that I'll do everything I can to help clear your name, make everyone in this room hear my voice. Being with you has been the happiest I've been in my life and I'm not ready to let you go just yet. I have yet to show you the outside world, so until that happens, I want to keep being with you. You won't need to protect me just by staying silent, just because there was something that bothered you that night. And leave everything to me, no matter what happens, it will not change my view of you. So to show my loyalty, I swear my honor is a script- No. I swear on my name that I'll protect you! Asher. My doubts are finally gone. I've finally chosen what I want to risk. I'll believe in Koku no matter what. I'm announcing it now! If I fail, I will join everyone in this village. And so, I'm abandoning this. This badge is not as valuable as Koku. I, Asher, am renouncing my position as a guild scrivener. R Renounce? Huh? What is the meaning of this? Commander, I believe I am in no position to serve the guild anymore. I will dedicate everything I have to helping this village, and I'll prove to you all that Koku is innocent. You're overreacting like a spotted Kieran. How dare you turn your back against the guild? The guild I know and who I am with right now is not the same. If the guild promises to protect everyone from monsters... And I'll protect these true variants from the guild. Commander, this is absurd. You already lack in manpower now of this shit. Enough. Young Asher, is this truly what you desire? Yes, sir. To protect everyone. He was correct after all. Very well, the case will continue. Commander! Enough, I will see to the end of this. Young Asher, continue. Thank you, sir. My heart is still pounding after all of that. Now that I cannot back out, losing is no longer an option. Koku. I can take care of myself, so please tell me what happened. I... I'm so happy. Alright, I'll tell everything. I'm so excited! That is not the right thing to say, my guy. When I left after visiting you, I felt so bad I couldn't do anything, so I went to the waterfall to find your mushrooms for your max potion. It was so hard to find, but eventually I found one near some water. But I heard a branch break, and then I saw someone fall into the water. I got worried, so I jumped in and tried to bring them to land. It's a good thing you taught me how to swim, but the armor was still troubling. My dad taught me to remove clothes when they need a brief, so I removed his armor, but then I saw some... But then I saw someone saw me, and I froze. I panicked and got worried, so I just ran back to the village. I almost forgot that we were supposed to hide from humans. This is very different. You said you saved the victim from drowning and then escaped. I did, sir. I didn't know what got into me, but I think it was one of those need-to-save instincts you get when someone is in trouble. That is absurd. Sir Largo indeed fell into the water. How are we not able to hear it? You're so lame. I was near the water when he fell. Any normal guy would have heard something like that, even if it's raining. This may not look like it, but I have really good hearing. Clearly something you don't have. And I saw with my own eyes. But you might be blind, too, so I don't feel sorry for you. <laughs> absurd. This is absurd. Enough! Admiral, do you have any evidence or arguments to contradict Sir Koku's testimony? I... Hmm... Commander, this does not explain the medical report given. It said Sir Largo had a scratch wound on his chest and was bleeding heavily. The Dodogam attacked the victim once he was able to remove the armor. As long as this stands, he was still capable of harming Sir Largo during the time he was not seen. I must think his story is too convenient for it to be true. I don't care what a waste of space thinks. Asher believes me and that's all that matters, right? Right. Commander, I will question the witness to prove that the Admiral that this is true. Koku, just answer all of my questions honestly and leave it to me. Okay. Hm. Very well. You may begin your cross-examination. I fucking love his face. You went to the waterfall for me? I'm sorry. I, you've been helping me out and I want to help you too. About them, so I thought it would be easy. God, it's all in this mess now. It's fine, it's fine. 
You really shouldn't worry about me on that. I had a worse experience before that as Miles compared to Justice Stomach Ache. It's really sweet that you did that for me. I'll make it up to you when we get back. Commander, I would like to ask the Scrivener to stop flirting with the witness. Agree. Young Asher, please refrain from unnecessary comments during the hearing. S sorry Commander. Just to clarify, you were only there by coincidence? Of course, I didn't want my dad to worry about me being seen by humans. But I guess that's a problem now. I thought the wing would hide me like a camellius, but I forgot I am too blue. But I didn't really expect to see someone falling off a cliff. You remember how high was the fall? It was too dark for me to notice. I know he fell from high up since it made a large splash. I think maybe at the top? I don't know if he'll survive that because you survived too. Right. That's what happened to me too. However, this contradicts another statement. If he fell from the top of the waterfall, then why didn't we see him fall? The victim was sent ahead, so the fall was lower and less lethal if he did. He wouldn't need any help, and he is a high rank hunter of exceptional caliber. Admiral, please don't forget that it was raining at the time. Climbing up or down a grassy cliff during heavy rainfall will cause an accident. Wouldn't be surprised if he slipped shortly while he climbed down. Speaking from experience, the shock of falling and suddenly drowning would render anyone helpless. Therefore, Koku said might be possible. For now. Bitch. I made you attempt to save him. This is the right thing to do. My mom always taught me that I should always help someone if they need help. I know someone else will eventually help me if I ever get in trouble. Mom said it's the world taking care of me as thanks for taking care of someone else. So now I have you helping me. Koku, I can't help but think your innocent way of looking at the world really, is really amazing. Even after losing your mom and being locked up here, you still stayed positive and open. Regardless, I can use this, and use this for something else. And you just saved one of the hunters that hunt you because you felt you need to? That is extremely convenient. Surely there is some other reason why other than kindness. I was expecting anything in return, mister. If I stayed instead of running away, then maybe it looked like it from the evidence and scenes. Maybe I ran away because I smelled your body odor at the time. Whatever it is, I don't want anything to do with you. Truly absurd. No further questions. He looked butthurt just now. <laughs> Thanks, Koku. Good. <laughs> Can you describe the one that spotted you? He looked unreliable, but I think you meant his clothes. I didn't see his face, but I remember seeing blue and red armor. I wish you could have seen his face, but I can kind of imagine his reaction. That's fine. Your description matches Jack and it aligns with his testimony. But I feel like there's something strange about this. Koku's never touched or worn armor before, or at least know how to wear one. There's something fishy with that evidence. When you ran back, did you bring anything with you? I left everything there after I fished him out of the water. Oh, I did bring the mushroom I went for. I was too scared of touching his weapon, so I left it there too. Right, his weapon. Can you tell me what weapon that is? It's okay, just describe it. Okay. I can definitely say it's a blowgun. It's a bowgun. They didn't really touch it, but it looked like it's made of wood from the brown color. I also didn't have a wing. I also didn't have a wing, I think it's called. That also matched the testimony we had earlier. Admiral, since you are Sir Largo's leader at the time and clearly remember this bowgun, please tell us if this description fits the bowgun. And might I remind you, you are under oath. <sighs> Ordering me around like that. How dare you! Admiral! Fine. The Dodogama's words are accurate. It was a bow gun. Hang on, I think it's... Right there. And we're dead. Hold right there, Koku! You said that you removed the armor, right? Yeah. It looked like he was having trouble breathing, so I took it off. And how did you remove his armor? Eh? I have a hunch, but it seems like you removed it the right way. There's a right and wrong way? He obviously ripped it off. Take a look at this armor. There's obviously damage on it, the chest and scratch marks. This signifies that the armor was removed by force. There was no other way that the armor was removed as such. There is. If you look at the armor at a glance, it appears to be damaged. However, I noticed that the scratch marks were only on the chest. This type of steel armor, meaning it is connected by a latch. I turn it around here. Ah, here it is. That is. This is an armor latch. 
The latch here doesn't appear damaged as well. Used, but it does seem taken care of. After studying armors back in training, I remember that steel and solid armors need a latch. Mostly to fix things into place, but also keep it very secured. Maybe the monster will not be able to remove it easily. So if you would do claim that the, mon that the armor was removed by force... Why is the latch still intact? That's because, uh... It was just a coincidence that, that the Dodogama was able to unlock it. I highly doubt that, Admiral. You should know that these latches are only taught to guild personnel, and it is very difficult to remove it. Koku might have saved the victim from drowning, but he didn't know how to remove it either. Wait. Save the victim from drowning? Does that mean the victim was actually... Ah! Young Asher, is there something the matter? Commander! We have overlooked something extremely crucial from the testimonies we had so far. Something crucial? What are you talking about? Explain. All this time, we were just assuming this from the report and the testimonies, but... There's something missing in the testimonies entirely. Pretty sure it's the victim's consciousness. That's right! Koku, was the victim awake after you got him out of the water? Ah! What is this nonsense? It says here in the report that Sir Largo drowned. Wrong. It says that there were signs of him almost drowning. Even my question with the village's feline medic, Grano, said that the victim almost drowned. Almost drowning means he did not drown. What? Silence. I demand silence. Young Asher, explain. What are you insinuating? Certainly, sir. When I thought about the latch, Koku certainly hasn't seen one before. That then begs the question, how did Koku know how to unlock it and remove the armor? I can assume he tried by removing it by force. Hence the scratch marks. That I can agree with the Admiral, but there was a difference. The purpose was not to attack the victim, but to just remove the armor so he could breathe. And with nobody else there to teach him but Sir Largo... Sir Largo was the only one who could have said something. Correct, Commander. Absurd. Sir Largo was unconscious during the entire situation. The rookie said so in his testimony. Wrong again, Admiral. Jack only said he, that he saw Koku towering over Sir Largo. Remember that he was so focused on seeing Koku that he could not focus on the body under him. Let's make this easier for us. Koku, can you tell me right now if the guy you saved was awake? Well, he's awake. Enough! Silence! Are you sure about this, Sir Koku? I'm sure about it. Just like what Asher said. It was this guy I saved that told me how to remove it. Then why was this not added to your testimony? Being honest, I thought you all knew already. Knew? He was still awake when I ran away. It's not like he passed out because the armor is already removed. I know, I know, I should have said something, but I'm sorry. You're lying. Admiral, do you have any other counter-arguments about this? Commander, how can we confirm that this is correct? I mean, the victim being awake, this is absurd. Oh my god! Can you just listen for once? He was awake and even talking, you think I would joke about that? Everyone here is in a mess because of me, the last thing I want to do is lie. No wonder you look like you're not any friends. I do agree with that word, they're not enough to convince me that it is true. Exactly. However, with the evidence presented, I cannot deny that it is highly possible. What? To get a bigger picture of the situation, Sir Koku. Yeah? Please give your full testimony again. This time include the details about talking with the victim. I'd like to hear what happened after you saw Sir Largo fell from the cliff. I expect the full truth from you. The truth. Well, okay. The commander sounds like he is probing Koku for more information. And I still have a weird feeling we're not getting the full picture just yet. There's still some unanswered questions, but there's something that is bothering me, specifically with how Koku is moving right now. But he looks tired, but why does it look like he's hiding something? <sighs> Fuck. I am tired. Are we able to stop tonight? Like, I am tired. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I gotta I gotta leave off here tonight. Still got shit to do, but I, I just I just gotta stop. Ugh. Fuck. Stay safe, have a good night, and I will see you all tomorrow.